Hey guys, X here, and welcome to our first episode of Let's Play American Truck Simulator, the brand new game that's coming to you from SES Software. So this series is going to serve two purposes. The first one is obviously we're going to highlight the game, talk about some changes between this and SES's other hit selling title, uh, Euro Truck Simulator 2. And then kind of how this one stands on its own and stands away from the other. And then obviously the other one is we're going to do a, like a career mode let's play. So it's going to kind of transition from talking about differences as we come across them in the game into actually just doing a straight career mode. We start hitting up runs and, you know, and start having our conversations. All right, so a little bit about me first. Uh, won't take too long because I know you guys don't want to hear about me that much, but... Uh, so I am a uh, beta tester for SES Software, and uh, I am a real trucker in the real life. So a lot of the vehicles that we have in this game, I have had personal experience with their real life counterparts. In addition to that, I've been uh, passing my knowledge along to SCS so they can make sure that you guys got the best game possible, and they did a fantastic job. I'm pretty sure you guys will not be disappointed. Now... They did take kind of a new approach with this one, which I think is going to be really interesting and really exciting, and it's going to keep you guys on your toes, but we'll hit on that later. All right, so the first episode here, we're going to actually not going to go on the road. So what I want to do is I just kind of want to give you guys a guided introduction to the user interface here and what you're going to be interacting with when you're actually uh, you know, playing the game. As far as mods goes, as you can tell here, uh, MNT Trucking is the, the VTC that I belong with through the, the Pirate Bay Gaming community. And this is going to be the only mod that I run in the game right now. So kind of giving homage to my guys over at MNT and the Pirate Bay Gaming community. And be sure to check them out. The links are below down there. All right. So first things first, trucks. What truck do we have here? So for our journey, we're going to be cruising with the Peterbilt. All right, so this is going to be the Peterbilt 579 duty cabin, day cab. Very basic setup. Um, so this is going to be our workhorse throughout the first part. Now something to notice about this series that we're doing here is I went ahead and skipped ahead of all the uh, the first ones before uh, you don't get your own truck. So I just bought my own truck, just finalized the first garage. All that is the exact same as Euro Truck Simulator 2. Same thing with the tutorial. If you go through the tutorial, it's going to be the exact same as of right now. So we're going to go ahead and kind of highlight a, a few of the things. So first, all, you're going to notice that your standard UI here is pretty much the same. And to kind of pay homage to SCS's CEO, this is actually the CEO, I believe. I could be wrong. Pretty sure that's him, Mr. Paval. So to pay homage to, to him, and since he did such a great job uh, with this game, we have to use his picture. All right, so you see here we have our first skill because we are level one. We'll get into that. And then now we have our truck, same thing as your, as ETS2, where you have your, your basic outline. But there are some differences that integrated into this game that I'm sure you guys will be happy with. All right, and then company, you do have a whole new set of company logos that you could use. I like this one. They have a bunch that I think are really sharp, and it was extremely hard to choose from them. I think this is the, uh, it's going to suit our, our use here very well for MNT trucking. All right, so their bottom interface is going to be the exact same. You see we still here have our two emails because I just went through all the, uh, all the, the beginning of it so we could buy our own truck. Um, company manager, bank, and recruitment agencies are, are pretty much the same, but let's get to the nitty-gritty and the good stuff here. All right, so we're going to uh, talk about our trucks here. So when you first choose your truck, in this case I chose my favorite truck as Peterbilt, so you come to the dealership. All right, so now there's some things that I want to talk about here from a real trucker's perspective that people who have never been around a trucking culture may not know or our brothers across the ocean over there who are used to driving these shorter cabs because there are a lot of things that you got to take into consideration whenever you're actually driving these runs. 
So the first things you got to keep in mind when you're choosing between your, your first truck, and it actually does take a little bit of research, is uh, do you do Peterbilt or Kenworth? Right. So some of the things that you want uh, to remember is your the spacing between your wheels. All right. These are not cab overs that you see over in, in Euro truck. Right. You have a wider wheel base. And because of that, you're going to have to consider your turning radius. So your Peterbilt is going to have a little shorter wheel base, if my measurements are correctly, than the Kenworth. So which is why we're using it today. So my turns will be a little bit more easier. All right, so now some other things here. So we got, okay, well, pretty much you're, uh, you're going to recognize this screen is the exact same as uh, a Zero Truck Simulator. And we're going to go into our Customized Configurator. All right, so the uh, you're going to notice here that, you know, we're, we got kind of a boring truck. You know, we all know that grind from ETS, but you know what? That's what makes it all that much more better. But I just want to comment on the model. The model is spot on. I mean, they did an outstanding job capturing every little detail. I mean, even down to like the diesel exhaust fluid tank, which we're required to have here in America. You know, positioned perfectly the way the stairs are. Everything is exactly as it should be. Um, even down to the detail they give to the basic steely rims, you know, your battery box, your handles, you know, the little reflectors, the details, you know, and they, they say the devil's in the details, and it really is. So they did an absolutely fantastic job in uh, getting the details right on this truck. So when they say they're going to bring you an authentic trucking experience with these, they're not kidding. They went beyond, and they did it very, very well. So my hat's off to SCS on that part. All right. So just like in Euro Truck, as you advance in your levels, you'll open up your different styles from your day cabs to your, you know, what I call them coffin sleepers, and then into your high-rise walkable sleepers that are in the back. Um, same with chassis, engine, transmission, interiors, and the whole nine yards. Paint jobs, you're going to have a whole bunch of brand new awesome looking paint jobs. The uh, graphic designers over there at SES did an outstanding job. So for all intents and purposes on here, since we're paying homage to our boys over at MNT, we're going to be using uh, their paint job. And same thing you're going to notice for uh, our attachment points and everything like that. We have nothing unlocked right now, but eventually we'll get there. All right. So that's just the basics you got to consider when you're first choosing your truck is Peter Baylor Kenworth. So at the time uh, this via, this uh, game is going to be released, I believe, as long as things don't change according to uh, how the plans were told to us, you can have the tick pick between two trucks, either the Peterbilt that we have here, the 579, or the Kenworth T680. All right, so both of them are fantastic jobs. The models are equally impressive. And the one thing that I want to hit on here is the interior. So... They did really, really hard work and a lot of research into the the dynamics of the game and realism, right? So if one of the things that I want to hit on is one that all your gauges now have a specific use and you really should pay attention to them, especially if you're going to attempt to use the uh, what we call the crash box transmission. So what it is in over in Europe, you have a synchronized transmission that gives you a lot of free play. Here in America on our Eaton Fuller Series transmissions, you miss that gear, you miss it. And it will not go in and it can create some very dangerous situations. So, they did their best to emulate it and they did an amazing job on it. I mean, it, I, I helped them with the, uh, with the testing of that and it is spot on. So, if you ain't never driven an American truck, you're going to feel like it. And if you can shift perfect in this game... And I guarantee you can jump into this truck in real life and you'll be able to shift perfect in that. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a, a quick overview of the interior of our Peterbilt here. All right. So again, everything. I mean, the first time I sat in this truck, it gave me flashbacks of, of what it was like in real life. You know, so I mean, it is very, very almost scary how good they got it. You know, and it made me really happy because in the end, that's what they want to do is bring you the best experience that they possibly can. Mm. All right, so we'll go ahead and uh, do a quick rundown on our, on our gauges here. So that what you're going to see here on the, the bottom left is this going to be your standard fuel. 
uh, right above it, we're going to have your, your level for your diesel exhaust fluid. As of right now, whenever you fill up your fuel, you fill up your diesel exhaust fluid at the same time. Right above that, we have a coolant temperature, RPMs, your speedometer, your oil pressure, or temperature, I forgot one of those two, air tanks one and air tanks two. If you run the air brake simulation, make very sure you're paying attention to your brakes. Um, the last thing you want to do is run out of air and have to sit there and idle at the one, uh, 1,000 RPMs until you can build up your air pressure. Same with your info sensor and then all your other stuff. So we have our, our built-in navigation into our dash here. And something that a lot of our brothers across the pond over there may not know is what are these? So in playing Euro Truck Simulator 2, I noticed that for the uh, the parking and air supply for the trailer was just a lever they used there on the dashboard. So and this is actually what we use. So what it is is whenever you hook up to your, your truck and you have that red and the blue umbilical in the back, those are your airlines. When you hook them up to your trailer, you're going to push this red button in. And what that's going to do is that's going to supply your air to your trailer so that way you can release the brakes and whatnot. And then your yellow one here is just your parking brake. You know, so when you get ready to take off, you know, you slap in your red air supply to give air, uh, to release the brakes on the trailer. Slap in your your yellow one there, and then you're good to go. And then, like whenever you stop at a truck stop, usually you keep the red one in and just pop the yellow one out. So that's gonna be uh, that's a, a little bit different uh, that you guys may have to you know you know be. Uh, get used to and it'll be interesting to see what mods come out because in real life I guarantee you those two buttons don't stay on there long we have either skulls that we can screw on them or what not to customize them and I guarantee you guys there's gonna be some serious customization coming to these things uh, besides that I mean everything else you know you got your fully adjustable mirrors um, one thing I do want to notice on these day cabs and everyone's gonna start out with a day cab that a lot of people forget about is now you're gonna have a back window so we can't see it too well now because we're uh, we're in the the truck customizer. But when we're actually driving, we can look out that back window. And as we go, you'll see me use it. You know, so don't forget to use all the assets you have available to you. So right now, as it stands, I mean, it's just absolutely amazing the level of detail that they went into here. All right, so let's go ahead and back on out. All right. So while we're here, we're going to go ahead and we'll get into the map real quick since we'll just kind of give you a brief overview of what we're working with here. All right, so right now, at the, when you guys get the initial release here, we're going to have two states. We have Nevada and we have California. All right, it may not seem like much, but when you're driving here, I mean, it takes so long to come from somewhere like, like Jackpot down to San Diego. I mean... There is just so much road there. It is unbelievable. And then they did a couple of things that we'll get into later that I think makes the game really, really enjoyable. All right. So, and obviously, as time goes on, we're going to get subsequent states until eventually we have the entire 50. All right. So, these are the two states that we're going to start out with. And when you start your game, there's a couple garages you get to pick from. Los Angeles, San Francisco... Las Vegas and Elko, I believe, are, are the ones. You'll see when you get in the game there and you start your own. So I went ahead and started with uh, Elko because I loved like the feel of driving through the desert. Um, I've been through this city a lot of times in real life, uh, doing hauls down to San Francisco and whatnot. And I thoroughly just enjoy this area of the town. So I figured, why not? We'll go ahead and make it our base. All right, so everything is we're all set now. Um, oh, and one thing too, just a little bit of advice I want to give a lot of people because I've seen a lot of people ask the questions, you know, saying that the steering is too loose or it's too tight or whatnot. So everybody has their way I set it up uh, for my steering wheel. The way I always set it up is keep steering sensitivity all the way up, and then bring my nonlinearity so it's equal with the uh, the right side and the left side here are equal the slider so that way you'll have maximum control when you're actually driving down so you can make very fine adjustments when you're on the highway but yet when you're going to your extremes you can do your backing maneuvers all just perfect 
All right, so this is System Soldier X with MNT Trucking. We're going to end the first episode here. We're going to run out to the road, and we're going to go ahead and start putting the pedal to the metal. So like always, I encourage you to watch the next episode. Um, feel free to comment down below, uh, like, and subscribe if you're going to want to see more of this game in in-depth, and we'll see you guys next time. All right, so like always, put the pedal to the metal and lay that rubber on the road. See you guys later, drivers. Hey guys, X here. As always, thanks for watching. Please feel free to comment below and if you like what you see, tap that subscribe button. Also, check out the channel for other videos and game series. Alright, till next time.